Welcome to How to Cook That, I'm Anne Reardon and today we are making a Barbie car cake. If you're new around here, hit the subscribe button and tap on the bell to be notified of my new videos. To make my lemon and blueberry cake, you will need eggs, almond meal, blueberries of course, flour, baking powder, butter, icing sugar and lemon rind. And all of the recipe quantities are on my howtocookthat.net website and there's a link to that below. Put the icing sugar, almond meal and the butter and the lemon rind into a mixing bowl and you can also put the baking powder in with the flour and we'll add the blueberries in that later. Put the mixer on to mix and keep going until you have a nice smooth mixture. Then add in your flour and your baking powder and you only want to mix that until it's just combined. Don't over mix it. Tip that into a tray lined with non-stick baking paper and spread it out evenly, making sure that you have enough in the corners so that the cake is even all over. It doesn't spread heaps, so if you don't take the time to make it smooth, you're gonna end up with more in the middle. Sprinkle the top of the cake with frozen blueberries. I like using them frozen because it means they don't burn in the oven and they stay super juicy in your cake. If you prefer, if you don't like lemon and blueberry, you could of course use my chocolate cake recipe for this cake instead. Then bake that in the oven at 180 degrees C or 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes. Mine took 23 minutes, but it depends on your oven, so check it at about 20. And look at that, beautiful, moist, yummy cake. Next, you need to go to the website and get the template, print it out, and cut out all the pieces. You will also need a support for under the car, and the size for that is on the template too. It curves up a little bit of the back of the car and we need to hold it off the base. So we're gonna need some little supports. So we'll put one there, two, three, four, five, and then just tape those into place. So you can see there we've got those blocks giving support to the main section of the car, but we just need to support this back section so it can stay going up on that angle. So you just need something that's a little bigger than your blocks that can hold it slightly higher there like that. Place your template on top of the cooled cakes and cut out all of the pieces. Then spread some buttercream onto your baseboard. I'm using my lemon buttercream recipe and that's on the howtocookthat.net website too. There's lots of flavours you can choose from there. Then add the front layer number one at the front and the back layer number one at the back. Each layer is labelled on the template so you know what goes where. Then using a knife or a cake leveller, flatten out the top of the cake at the back section to compensate for that slope up of the cake board. So the top of the cake should be level and flat. Drizzle a little bit of simple syrup onto the cake. If you're starting with good quality moist cake, then you don't need much of this. It's just adding a little bit of moisture so that when we're carving the cake, it doesn't dry out. Stack up the layers with buttercream and you'll notice how the front section has one less layer than the back. That's because the front of the car is slightly lower than the back of the car. Put your side template in front of the cake and trim around the shape at the back and the front of the car. Once you've done that, cut this bit of the template down and fold it in so that you can cut the slope on the inside of the car where the seats go. Put the front template in place and cut around the curves on the sides. And then you can cover the whole thing in buttercream. Now check your template where the tires go and using a round cookie cutter, push it in until you hit the baseboard. Then use a spoon to scoop out a flat section of cake. You could do this before you cover it in buttercream, but I just find it easier to get that perfect round circle with the buttercream there if you do it in this order. Remove the cookie cutter and spread on some buttercream in the gap that you've made. On the top of the seats, carve a little bit off on an angle on each side and take out a chunk in the centre. Just think about where the top of the headrests would be in a car and that's where we want the bits sticking up and then just cover those in the buttercream. Let me know in the comments how many hours you think a cake like this takes to make. 
not including the time for the actual cakes to bake and cool, just the time for layering, buttercream and fondant, and I'll pin the closest comment. For the sides of the car, pour some chocolate onto foil, and you can use compound chocolate or real chocolate that has cocoa butter in it, but if you use real chocolate, you need to temper it or it's not going to be crisp and hard at room temperature. Once that's starting to set, add the template over the top and cut around it. And you'll need to make two of these, of course, because there's two sides to the cake, and then leave them to firm up. It may actually take me longer to make a cake than most people because I have to move the camera and then focus it and set up each shot. There's no cameraman here, it's just me in my kitchen making a cake for you guys. But then other people have said to me it would probably take them longer because they're not used to making cakes, so maybe that would even out. But anyway, let me know your guess. Place some baking paper over the wheel template and pipe the shapes that you can see on the wheel. And you will of course need to do four of these. When I'm doing this sort of thing, I actually like to do five or six so that I can choose the four best ones. Roll out some pink fondant and add the spoiler template on top and cut around it. And then leave that on some baking paper to dry out. Place some black fondant onto the inside of the car and then trim it off just a bit bigger than it needs to be. So you can see there it's wrapping around the edge slightly. On top of the white chocolate, add a thin layer of black fondant. It doesn't need to cover to the very ends, it just needs to cover that middle section, and then trim it along the edges. Using a tiny bit of water, add that into place on the sides of the car. And you can just push the two sides together. Now these two front wheel sections stick out a bit, so you just need to snap those off and push them where they are into place into the buttercream. That will just add a bit of definition to our shape. I'm gonna add some support under these sides while they set and then use some pink fondant over the back section and smooth it down around the shape of the car. Trim off the excess at the level of the cake board and then tuck the extra bit under the car. If you just add a little bit of water to the back of the fondant, it'll just stick up under the cake board there. Use something round to push the fondant into the wheel area. It doesn't matter what it looks like at the back there. We just want the bit around the edge to look nice and smooth. Then use a knife to cut the extra fondant off that's on the chocolate there. Just cut it on the angle that the car seats are on. Cover the rest of the car in pink fondant and immediately trim along the top of the car doors and across the front so that you can see inside the car again. Then trim and tuck in around the base, just like you did for the back. Then use a dinner plate to draw an arc on the top of the cake. This is where the windscreen will go. Then draw some lines down and across the bonnet or hood, depending what country you're from, and draw lines along the sides of the car too. And use a spatula to make an indent. And then I'm just gonna use the handle of a fork to make an indent for the door handle for where your little hand goes when you're opening it. Make more indents at the back. And for all of these, I'm using the back of my knife, not the sharp side. You don't want to cut through your fondant and make a hole in it. You just wanna make an indent. Add a sloped strip behind the seats and trim it to size. And then draw lines into that piece with stripes in the middle and then a little shape on each side. I can't remember what this shape is called. If you know what it's called, let me know in the comments. Add a piece to the front of the car, just in place at the front of the arc that we drew, and then draw an extra line just in front of that. Put the spoiler into place on the back and make sure that's sitting flat. If you look at it from the back of the car, make sure that it's level and it's not on an angle. For the seats, roll out a thickish piece of black fondant and cut that into two pieces and then trim the sides. Put them together to check that they are even and then push your spatula into the middle to make an indent where the person's body would go and then draw lines across and then trim the top head section to make it slightly narrower. Run a tracing wheel up each side to make it look like stitching on the car seat and then add them into the car. Now I'm just gonna put an extra little piece of black fondant for a pillow on each headrest and your seats are done. 
add a rectangle of black between the two seats for where the gear stick and everything goes and then for the wheels take a cookie cutter slightly smaller than the one you use to cut the holes for the wheels and fill that with chocolate and leave it to set. Cut circles of black fondant and carefully add the piped chocolate pieces on top. Then just using some luster dust and a dry paintbrush, dust over those wheel covers. And this luster dust is edible, so it just gives a nice silvery color to it. Take your chocolate wheels and dampen them all over and then cover them with a thin layer of black fondant. Use your hands to smooth it across and around all of the edges, then trim it off, flip it over, and neatly squash the edges in and around the other side so that the whole chocolate disc is covered. Put a little water on the top and add your wheel cover in the center. Roll out some more black and using the template cut out the front grille and the back grille. Use a ruler or something straight to make lines across the length of it and then lines running the other way too. Add them into place on your car and then use your ruler just to make sure it's straight. Cut a little strip and put it above the indent for the door handle and then cut a piece of pale pink and add it to the top of the car where you drew that curved line and down the dashboard. You can use some acetate to make some little indents for air vents and I like to use straws to make little circles for little bits and pieces that are happening on the dashboard. Cut out your headlights and use a little bit of water to add them into place. And then use a paintbrush and some gel food coloring to paint on the lights. Anytime you have to paint a circle, I find it's easier if you make an indent using a straw or a lid and then paint around that. Add your tires into place. Use a circle cutter to make a hole on the driver's side. Here in Australia, the driver's side is on the right hand side of the car, but in all the Barbie cars, even in the shops here, the driver's on the left, which is how it is in America. Not sure how it is in the country you're in. Let me know below, are you on the left or the right? You can choose. And then dig out a little bit of cake from there and carefully push the Barbie into place. This is a brand new doll and I have washed the legs and then wrapped them in plastic wrap so that it's not coming into contact with the cake part. This stuff never shows up on camera but I am adding some edible pink glitter to the car because the Barbie car is sparkly. For the windscreen, melt some isomalt in a pan and pour that onto some baking paper. Once it's starting to set, make some indents around your template. And before it's set hard, bend it to the shape of the cake and put it into place. And because it's rounded, it will just sit there. Then add a strip of pink up the sides of your windscreen. And you have a unique Barbie doll cake. And if you're looking for a doll dress cake and a few different designs with that, I'll link you to my designs here. Subscribe and hit the bell for more of my videos. Make it a great week and I'll see you on Friday.